Hello, welcome to CSK Speaks and I am CSK. You're watching me on the channel CSK Speaks. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the Netflix series Suits and also familiar with the famous character from the Suits, Howie Specter. If you are like me, you would have heard that line, the line which he keeps repeating right through the series. The line goes something like this. What choice do you have when somebody points out a gun at your head? Will you simply surrender? Or will you pull out a bigger gun at him or her? Or will you choose among the 146 options you have and get out of that place? The first time I heard this line, I did not make sense of that line. I was like, what is he trying to say? But this line, as I said, it keeps repeating through the series and in simple words if I have to cut to the chase all he means to say is use your presence of mind now it's very easy to say use your presence of mind but let me give you an extreme example and I am not professing any of us to do this but just take this example with a pinch of salt so let's consider a woman a woman who lives in America and then she is on her own and she is going on with her life. One morning, she decides that she goes on a drive. So she gets into her car and she is on a drive. She's enjoying her music. She's completely away from the reality around her. And then in the process, she is over speeding. This catches the attention of the cop who is standing by the sidelines and he signals her to reduce the speed. The lady conveniently ignores the cop and continues to overspeed. The cop immediately gets into the car and starts giving her a chase. Finally, after this entire drag of 10 to 12 miles, the cop puts his car right ahead of the ladies and then stops the car. He walks down to the lady and then asks her, What's the matter? Why were you overspeeding? The lady in an innocent voice replies, what do I tell you? The situation is like that. The cop does not understand. He says, what do you mean situation is like that? I'm asking you, why are you over speeding? Don't you know that there is a speed limit? He's like, that's what I'm telling you. The situation is like that and I'm really messed up. The cop is not able to make sense of whatever she's replying. He's like, you get down of the car. Tell me what's the matter. So the lady is like, Okay, if you insist, let me tell you this, that I have a neighbor and that neighbor is really a nasty guy. He keeps getting into a fight every other day and this morning was no different. He picked up a fight with me for no reason and I was really, really completely frustrated with this. So I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to end this right now. So I pulled out my gun and shot him in his head. The cop is like, what? You shot your neighbor? He's like, yeah. And he just collapsed and died on the spot. So I just dumped his body in the boot of this car. The gun, and the blood stained clothes, everything is in this car in the dashboard. And I just started to drive. Like, Are you insane? Will you kill your neighbor for a fight? And after that, you are just dumping the body and you are driving away. The cop is losing it completely and he's like, what? I just thought I caught you for overspeeding, but you are an out and out criminal. So the lady is like, well, that's why I said the situation is that I'm all messed up. He's like, okay, fine. Hand me over your driving license. The lady is like, what driving license? I don't even have a driving license. And in fact, this car does not even belong to me. This car is that neighbor's. Now, the cop has lost it. He's like, he immediately calls his superior officer and he says, Get here. I've caught a criminal red handed. She's been caught with the dead body and she is over speeding and she's fleeing away from the city. So, within 15 minutes, the superior officer arrives there. And then, after taking a complete debrief from the cop, he walks up to the lady and says, What have you done? 
the lady again in an innocent voice repeats, What have I done? He's like, What? You don't know what you have done after doing all of this? The lady again silently says, I don't know. What have I done? The superior officer is like, Okay, I don't want to talk anything to you. Open the boot. Let me see the dead body. The lady is like, What dead body? Which dead body are you referring to? Why will there be a dead body in the car's boot? Now the superior officer is going crazy. He's like, you haven't killed the neighbor? That's what the cop said. And that's why I'm here. And that's why we have stopped you. Oh, this cop is a liar. He stopped my car, says the lady. And then now he calls you and he tells, him, tells you all the story. This cop is lying from the minute he stopped the car. The superior officer is wondering whom to believe here. The lady continues, you don't believe me? Come, walk with me. I'll open the boot and see for yourself. So she opens the boot. There's nothing anyway. So now the superior officer begins to believe the lady and starts doubting the cop. And the lady continues, well, officer, this cop, as I said, is lying. He must have told you that I was over speeding. He must have told you that I don't have a driving license. Here. Here is my driving license. And he stopped me for over speeding. He is just trying to book me on a false case. Now, unable to make sense of what is happening and the reality in front of the superior officer and the facts which is presented to him by the cop are totally different. The superior officer lets the lady go. Like, sorry for the trouble, ma'am. Please carry on. And then he takes the cop for remand. The story ends there and the lady goes away free. But what I pulled out from this story is, look at the presence of mind of that lady. Now for one minute, as I said, this is an extreme example and I am not professing any of us to indulge in such tactics. But what I am trying to convey through this particular extreme example is, even in such situations, when you are pushed to the wall, you are not out of options. So when Harvey Specter said, when somebody puts a gun at your head, what option do you have? Will you just simply surrender or pick up among the 143 options you have? He really meant, never ever think you are out of options. So friends, in our life, we feel that we are running out of options. But if we can calm ourselves and use the presence of mind, I'm sure we can see more than one option. So enjoy every minute with your presence of mind. Thank you very much for watching. Do like, subscribe and share your comments if you like this particular example and the message. Because when people read your comments, they get inspired to watch the video and share it and also share their messages. Thank you for watching.